All right, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Well, the topic, the title for tonight's sermon is Don't Know What to Say. Don't Know What to Say. And so we're going to be talking about not knowing what to say. It's a goes along with some other sermons that we've done before that we'll highlight but there's there's times that you don't know what to say there's times that you don't know about something there's times that you just don't know so we're going to go through all of that we're going to talk about what to do so if you want to open up our first our first verse is going to be mark Chapter 13, verse 11. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verse 11. First we'll get some music, and then we will jump into it. All right, so if you'll bow your heads, pray in, and then we'll get started here. Dear Lord, we just come to you right now. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the trials. Lord, we thank you for the endurance of facing the trials. We thank you for the lessons learned from facing the trials. Lord, we thank you that you give us the guidance and the the strength and the courage and the the peace that can come along when we rely on you in the middle of trials. 
And Lord, we just ask that you bless this message. Lord, we ask that it be your words, your will, and that it reach those that need to hear it. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. <clears throat> so, again, the title of this sermon is Don't Know What to Say. Don't Know What to Say. And literally, I didn't know what to say tonight. I didn't know what I was going to preach on. I didn't know what I was going to say. So usually throughout the week, usually by about Wednesday, something will happen. I'll see something. Somebody will say something. And I've got a good idea of what I'm going to preach on Friday night. Well, Again, usually I'll see something, something will happen. I'll hear a good topic in a sermon I'm listening to. I'll read a verse that stands out, or I do something that I need to preach to myself on. That happens more often than not. Well, this week, and honestly for the past couple of weeks, but really, really this week, and today especially, there was so much going on that I just couldn't figure it out. You know, I've got I've got three showers at work that I'm completely having gutted and trying to coordinate between the demo, the demo crew, the rebuild crew, the a crew to come move the washing machines, moving moving racks in the hallway behind there, having to shut down laundry at work, which is a big deal, moving stuff around and coordinating some of that um, for distribution of, of clothing items. On top of that, you know, we had a power outage last week, so I've changed, I think, 80-something bulbs, fluorescent bulbs in light fixtures that are not easy to change the light bulbs in, uh, coordinating with an electrical contractor to come put some LEDs in, some of the ones that had burnt out. Um, just so much different stuff going on. And a lot of it was going on today to where I was running around and just could not could not get to a point where I knew what I was going to preach on today. And we've done a sermon on overwhelmed. That's one of the sermons. I came close to having a replay for tonight because I didn't know what I was going to say. And I was feeling a bit overwhelmed. And it really got really close to the point where I was really close to saying, I don't know what I'm going to preach on. We're going to have to do a replay for tonight because I just, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know what I'm going to say. And it was about 5.30. It's now 8 o'clock, so not a lot of time between when it hit and now it hit me of, that's what you're supposed to preach on. Don't know what to say. Don't know what to say. Because there are times that you're going to have that exact thing that you don't know what to say. What do you do when you don't know what to say? So I want to turn to Mark chapter 13, verse 11. Mark Chapter 13, verse 11. And again, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible tonight. Mark chapter 13, verse 11. And it says, When you take, well, excuse me, when they take you and turn you over to the court, do not worry beforehand about what to say, but say whatever is given to you by God in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but is the it is the Holy Spirit who will speak through you. Don't worry about what you're going to say even whenever you're taken into a courtroom. Don't worry about what you're going to say. Let the Holy Spirit speak through you. Don't worry beforehand about what you're going to say. Let the Holy Spirit speak through you. And we have another example of this. this is a, we only have three verses for tonight. Um, the second verse that goes along with this, we've seen this play out 
before in Exodus. So if you want to turn to Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 and 11, Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 and 11, I'll take a drink while you guys turn to Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. And it says, Then Moses said to the Lord, Please, Lord, I'm not a man of words, eloquent, eloquent or fluent, neither before or since you have spoken to your servant, for I am slow of speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the mute or the deaf, or the seeing or the blind? Is it not I, the Lord? And you can read through that whole interaction. And Moses is arguing with God of, I don't know what to say. I, 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 I'm not a good speaker. I, 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 I stutter. I, I, I don't know what to say. How are they going to believe me? Because I don't know what I'm going to say to make them believe me that you, God, sent me. And he argues with God back and forth to, where, to the point where God gets angry with Moses and says, I told you, I will give you the words, but since you won't listen, I'll send your brother Aaron to go with you. Which, again, you read through Exodus and Moses was worried about speaking to Pharaoh. And Moses said, I can't speak. So God sent Aaron with him. But you go through and read through Exodus, and I don't recall very many times that Aaron was the one that said a word to Pharaoh. But Moses argued, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Well, you may not know what to say, but God does. See, these verses tell us to rely on God. Both the Mark 13, 11 and the Exodus 4, 10 and 11, they tell us to rely on God, to rely on the Holy Spirit and to trust in Him to guide our spot to guide our tongues, especially when we don't know what to say. Especially when you don't know what to do, what to say. Rely on God, rely on the Holy Spirit to guide you in what to say. And sometimes, sometimes that something to say is nothing. Sometimes it's being there. We see that in Job with Job's friends. They went and they were with him and didn't say a word for, I think it was three days, and sat with him. The trouble didn't start till they opened their mouth and started giving bad advice. So sometimes that guidance that you need is to zip it Sometimes the Holy Spirit will prompt you just to open your mouth and let Him speak. But in order to do that, you have to be listening to what you're being prompted to do and get yourself out of the way. You have to remove yourself and your knowledge and what you know and your all of these things. You have to remove that and let him speak through you. You see, this is a, a side topic that uh, goes into this, but I don't know is a valid answer too. I don't know is a valid answer. We don't always have to have an answer to everything. I don't know is valid. We've done sermons on pride and ego. But see, no one wants to admit that they don't know something. No one really wants to admit, well, I don't, I don't know enough. I don't know this. It's hard to admit and put your pride and your ego aside and say, I don't know.
I'm not sure, but I'll check on it. I'm not sure, but I can go look. I'm not sure. Let's go look together. Valid. And I would appreciate and respect that honesty more than somebody that tried to feed me a line of smoke and tell me it's a steak. I would respect somebody that says, I don't know, and give me fried bologna and tell me it's filet mignon. I would respect somebody that is honest and says, I'm not sure, but I can check on that. I'm not, man, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to respect somebody's honesty rather than somebody that tries to lie or gives information that they don't really know. See, an expert in any field, an expert in a specific field, still doesn't know everything about that specific field. You take great thinker, so they say, Stephen Hawking, quantum physics expert, right? One of the smartest men alive, also an atheist, so how smart was he? But anyway, quantum physics expert, didn't know everything. Some of his theories have been proven wrong. Einstein. Another great mind. Had all the was an expert. Was was an expert. Came up with the theory of relativity. Came up with all these different mathematical and scientific genius level things. He didn't know everything about even that specific field because even him, with a lot of his theories, they've been disproven. No one knows everything about anything. So I don't know is valid. There's not a preacher out there either that can tell you that they know everything about God or everything about the Bible. I don't care how much of an expert you are on something, you don't know everything about it. I don't know is valid. I want to turn our last verse for tonight. I want to turn to Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 and 9. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. I'm going to take another drink. Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. And it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So, Sometimes it's good for us to remember that we don't know everything about anything. And we should continue to strive to learn. Because if you're not learning, something's, something's really wrong. Because even after we die, we're going to learn a whole lot more when we get to heaven. I they used to say the saying of, you know, if you're, not, if you're not learning, you're dead. But, you know, then I had to revise that and think, you know, no, there's a lot of things that I'm going to learn once I get to heaven. And if I'm not learning, there's some really messed up things going on. We should continue to strive to learn. And again, that sometimes means that we have to remove ourselves from a situation in order to learn. We have to admit that we don't know and remove our pride and ego, remove ourselves to allow the Holy Spirit to work through us. We have to remove ourselves and remove that pride and ego to learn because if we have it in our head that we already know, how much are you going to learn when you have it in your head that you already know it? How 
how much are you going to learn if you think you already know it? That you already know everything that there is to know about that topic. Played ice hockey off and on for 22, 23 years. Still learn every time I go out there. Every time I get on the ice, I'll learn something. If I went out there and thought that I already know everything about everything, I would be even worse than I already am. <laughs> and I'm not that good. You have to remove yourself and remove that I already know barrier. I don't know everything. Maybe I don't know what to say. Maybe I don't know exactly what to do. And that's okay. Learn. There's going to be situations with your friends that come up that you don't know what to say to help. Sometimes that's nothing. Sometimes it's you pray on it. God, t help me with this situation to give them some sort of peace, some sort of advice, some sort of something. Give me something. And you have to remove yourself in order to say what God wants you to say. And whether that be let him speak through you or zip it. Just be there. Ultimately, we have to let God be our wisdom. Ask the one who created everything. The one whose thoughts are higher than your thoughts. The one whose ways are higher than your ways. The one that separated and put the boundaries between the oceans and the earth. The one that Job was questioning with all of those questions. And God said, were you there whenever I created everything? Why don't you ask him to help you, to give you the knowledge? And give you the wisdom of what to say and what to do. Instead of relying on your own understanding. Because when we rely on our own understanding, we fail. If it was just me, I've tried that path with relying on just me and my understanding. I've tried that path. Didn't work out too well. Didn't work out too well. Rely on God. Ask Him to give you the wisdom. And most of the time, He will provide you with the answer that you need. Even if it ain't the answer you want. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. There's going to be some things that we just don't know. His ways are higher than our ways. There's going to be things that we just don't know. But if you ask God to help you and give you the wisdom, most of the time, He will provide you with something, if you move yourself out the way and listen to it. And I think that is what gets us trapped up more often than not, is we still, we're asking God to guide us. Lord, guide my steps as we're trying to run. How is God going to guide your steps if you're saying, I'm running this way? You're not letting God guide your steps. You're choosing to do things your way. You're not taking yourself aside and listening to sound advice. be it directly from God giving you a sign or putting someone there to give you that advice. 
Test the spirits, obviously, if you're getting advice from other people. Test the spirits to know whether it's sound advice or not. Test the spirits. The Bible tells us to do that. But the point is, is you have to take your pride, your ego, and all of those things aside. And your control. We, by nature are very controlling and we crave that control we crave that control even when something better is presented well that's not what I had well what you had was fine but this may be better hmm hmm and it makes it difficult, but it's okay to not to not know everything. We're not going to know everything. No one knows everything about everything. No one knows everything about one particular thing. We may think we do, but that's a little arrogant. It's a little arrogant to think that you know everything about one specific thing. So how in the world are you going to know everything about everything? Don't know what to say. Don't know. I don't know. It's valid. It's valid. And it's okay. What do you do when you reach that situation? Rely on God. Rely on the Holy Spirit. Move yourself out of the way and rely on Him to give you that wisdom. With that, I'm going to go ahead and close this one out. It's a shorter sermon tonight. I didn't know what to say to begin with. <laughs> so if you'll bow your heads, we'll pray out. Dear Lord, we just come to you right now. Lord, we thank you for, for these words. Lord, we thank you for your guidance. Lord, we thank you that when we don't know what to say, you do. Lord, we thank you that you gave us the Bible of your word that we can fall back on when we don't know what to say. Chances are you've already said it. Lord, we thank you for your guidance. Lord, we thank you for your peace. We thank you for your love. And Lord, we just ask that you strengthen us and give us the courage. Give us the courage to move ourselves out of the way at times. To move ourselves out of the way. To be more like you. To allow you to work through us. And shine your light and not just mine. Lord, we ask that you give us a restful night's sleep tonight and a blessed day tomorrow. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. With that, I will see you guys back Sunday morning. Sunday morning service. Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Wednesday night Bible study. Room starts at 6.30. Bible study starts at 7. If you want to join the Bible study, let me know. I can send you an invite, add you to the group. Bible studies, the room starts at 6.30. Bible study starts at 7. And Friday Night Lights, Friday night at 8 p.m. Until next time, I love you guys, and I will see you later.